Hello and welcome to Train Signal. You're watching installing the VMware vSphere client in Windows 7. So first off, what's the problem here? I would just assume that you could install the vSphere client in Windows 7 without any problems. I mean, Windows 7 isn't in beta, it's released, and the vSphere client has been out for a long time. And in fact, the vSphere client does install in Windows 7 seemingly without any problems. But the problem comes when you try to run the vSphere client and then connect to your vCenter server. And what happens is you get an ugly error that says error parsing clients.xml. And let me show you exactly what it looks like. All right, so I'm over here in Windows 7. I downloaded the vSphere client from one of my ESX version 4 servers. I ran the vSphere client here. I typed in the IP address for my vCenter server, which I know is up and running. I just connected it to it over from a, a PC running Windows Vista. I put in my administrator credentials here and I click login. And here's the ugly error you get, error parsing the server uh, clients.xml file, login will continue, contact your system administrator. And then you get the type initializer for virtual infrastructure utils, HTTP web request proxy through an exception. You say, okay, and you're back where you started. And seemingly there's no way around it. Well, uh, some great websites out on the internet, including extrovert.com and including the VMware communities, have published workarounds. And what I'd like to do in this video is just demonstrate for you how to perform those workarounds and get the vSphere client working inside Windows 7. All right, so what are we going to do to make this work? First, what we'll do is install a special DLL file or a system DLL file that we'll download from the internet. Next, we'll edit the vpxclient.exe.config file and I'll show you what we'll be putting in there. And then finally, we'll add a system variable, and then we'll be able to connect to our vCenter server from our Windows 7 PC running the vSphere client. And with that, let's get started. All right, so here I have a list of things we need to do. And the first thing is we need to download the special system.dll file that we're going to place in the program files VMware directory. Now you may or may not have that system.dll file on another computer. I'm going to show you where to find it on that other computer, which of course has to be a Vista machine, not a Windows 7 machine. But if you don't want to take the time to go find the file, I've placed it on my website. You can download it from vmwarevideos.com slash vSphere-Client-Windows7-System-DLL.Zip. I did zip it. You'll just need to unzip it, and I'll show you how to use that file in just a minute. But first, let me show you where this file might be located on a Windows Vista machine. If I go to my Start menu, I'm going to open up my computer. I'll go to my C drive. I'll go down into the Windows directory and then down into Microsoft.net. And then here you need to know if your Windows 7 machine is 32-bit or 64-bit. If you're running a 64-bit Windows 7 machine, you'll go into Framework 64 and then into one of these directories here, probably the original directory with the lowest version number. Scroll down and you'll find system.dll. Now look at the version for this file. We'll go into Properties and then Details. And this version is 2.0.50727.4016. And the version that I placed on my website is slightly different than that. I'll say Cancel here and close that out. And let's go over to our Windows 7 machine. And this is where I've actually downloaded the file from my website here. This is the vSphere Client Win7 System DLL. I'm going to right-click on it and extract it to my desktop. And here's the system DLL file that was extracted. It's a 3 meg file. I'll right click on it, go into properties, go into details. And this version, as you can see, is slightly different. I'll say cancel here. And this is the file that we're going to right click on and copy. And we need to paste this file into the VMware program files directory. But the location is going to depend on whether or not you're running 64-bit or 32-bit Windows 7. Here, if you're running 32-bit Windows 7, you need to paste it into program files VMware slash infrastructure slash virtual infrastructure client slash launcher slash live. But if you're running 64-bit, it needs to go into the program files x86 directory with the same path. All right, so let's give that a try. I'm going to go up here to my desktop and then into my computer, into my C drive. So let's go into program x86 and we see here a VMware folder and here we see infrastructure and here we see the virtual infrastructure client here we see launcher but there is no live directory now if you don't have a live directory but you did have the rest of the path that got you here just right click go to new folder and create a live directory we'll go into live and then we'll paste the system dll file in here 
I'll say continue and there we go. So we pasted it into program files x86 VMware infrastructure virtual infrastructure client launcher slash live. If we go back a few levels here let's check out program files go into VMware and notice here we didn't have a uh, virtual infrastructure directory tree to paste that under and that tells me that I know I'm running 64-bit Windows 7 if I didn't know that already. Alright so we pasted that file in let's go back to our slides Okay, the next thing we need to do is to edit the vpxconfig.exe.config file. And what we need to do is to add this right here. Uh, runtime development mode developer installation equals true. And then close that with runtime. We just need to add that into the file. So what I've done is I've copied this into my buffer. So I'll go over to my Windows 7 system. And we need to go into program files x86, VMware, infrastructure, virtual infrastructure client, then into launcher. And here's the configuration file we need to edit, the vpxclient.exe.config file. I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to open it and we need to select the program and I'm going to select notepad. So here we go, here's the configuration file. And what we need to do is to add this below the last configuration entry here. So what I'm going to do is just do a control V and paste that in and notice it's just above this slash configuration. That's where it needs to be right there. Here's what we just added into the VPX client configuration file. So this is what we edited right there. And we'll go up to file, we'll go down to save, we'll say save again, and yes we do want to replace it, and it tells us access is denied. If you get that, that's because uh, you need to run Notepad as administrator. So let's try that actually. I'm going to close this out and not save it. I'm going to go ahead and open up Notepad, go to All Programs here, go to Accessories, find Notepad. I'm going to right click on it and run it as administrator. I'll say yes and now we have the administrator Notepad and now I can open up a file and it happens to be already in this folder. I'm going to say All Files and open the vpxclient.exe and again we'll do the same thing. We'll paste in those settings there just above the configuration ending. I'll say File, I'll go up to File and down to Save and it doesn't complain this time and I'll close that out. To verify that it worked let's right click on it, I'll click on Edit this time and notice that our changes are in place. So it's very important that you edit that file as administrator. Alright so we just finished editing the vpxconfig.exe file and the final thing we need to do to make this work is to add a new variable. This is a system variable and the variable name will be DevPath and then the path will be one of these two entries right here. So if you're using 64-bit Windows 7, you'll use this entry. If you're using x86 or 32-bit Windows 7, you'll use the first entry here. And if you notice, these variable values are really just the full path to the live folder on your system. So again, the variable name is dev path. And let's go over to our Windows 7 system and we'll add this new variable. All right, so I'm going to go into the live folder here. I'm going to click up here and this way I can do a control C and I can copy that entire path right there. That way I don't have to retype it and we have the 64-bit version because as we know I'm running 64-bit Windows 7. So to create a variable in Windows 7 what you do is you go down to your start menu, you go to my computer, you right click, you go into properties and then here you go into advanced system settings and then we'll go down to environmental variables. Here what we need to do is to add a new system variable. I'll click new down here in the system variable section. We know the variable name is going to be dev path. And then for the variable value I'll do a control V and I'll paste in the full path to the 64-bit live directory for the virtual infrastructure client. I'll say OK there. And there we go. We have a new variable. I'll say OK. I'll say OK. We'll close this out. We'll close that out. And now we're ready to run the vSphere client again. So I'll launch the vSphere client. I'll type in my Windows administrator username to log in to the vCenter server. Press enter. And there we go. We just connected successfully to our vSphere virtual infrastructure using the vSphere client on Windows 7. I can go into my hosts and clusters here, span this out, and we can see everything seems to be working well here inside the vSphere client running on Windows 7. So with that success, we've come to the end of this video. So what did we learn? Well, we learned that Windows 7 isn't supported currently by VMware. I'm sure it will be soon, but not today. The error that you get when you install the vSphere client and then you attempt to connect 
to a vCenter server is the error parsing clients.xml file. Now we found out that to solve that problem, you need a special system.dll file. You can download that file from my website, or you can get it from a Windows Vista machine running the .NET client. From there, we made some special entries into the VPX client.exe config file. And then finally, we added a system variable, and we were able to successfully connect to vSphere using Windows 7. Thanks for watching this video covering installing the vSphere client in Windows 7.